This is question number 7 of May June 2018, paper 41. The diagram shows a triangular block with sloping faces inclined to the horizontal at 45 degrees and 30 degrees. Particle A of mass 0.8 kg lies on the face inclined at 45 degrees and particle B of mass 1.2 kg lies on the face inclined at 30 degrees. So first let's resolve these two forces. So due to the weight, this will pull this particle this way. This will be 45 degrees and this will be 8 cos 45 and this will be 8 sin 45. Similarly, particle B's weight will pull it down in this direction and horizontally in this direction. So this will be 12 cos 30 and this will be 12 sin 30. So in order to know which way the particle will move, we need to calculate this component and this component and whichever component is higher it will indicate in which in which particle is moving downward let's calculate that so 8 sine 45 is 5.66 and 12 sine 30 is 6 which means particle b will move downwards and particle A will move upwards when released from rest. Let's read the rest of the question. The particles are connected by a light inextensible string which passes over a small smooth pulley P fixed at the top of the faces. The parts A, B and B, P of the string are parallel to lines of greatest slope of the respective faces. The particles are released from rest with both parts of the string taut. In the subsequent motion, neither particle reaches the pulley and neither particle reaches the bottom of a face. So other information that we given us is that the initial speed is zero and that the particles are connected by a string. When both particles are connected by a string, it means that both will have the same speed and acceleration as well as the distance traveled. These three things will be the same since they are connected. Question asks, given that both faces are smooth, find the speed of A after each particle has traveled a distance of 0.4 meters. So this means, smooth faces means that there is no friction. And additionally that they've given us is that the distance traveled is 0.4 meters. This can be solved using the formulas of kinematics, which are V is equal to U plus AT or V square minus U square is equal to 2AX and third which is X is equal to UT plus half AT square. So we also know that the initial velocity is zero. So when we look at these formulas, we can see that question that formula number two is the most suitable since this will become zero and we already have x. So if we find out the acceleration, we can also find out the final speed of particle A. So we can find out acceleration using the forces formula, which is forward force minus resistive force is equals to ma. Now, the most easiest approach would be to see these both objects as a system, as one object. So this means it will be a system. So this will become, so the forward forces will be those forces that, they're pull, that is pulling B downwards and the resistive forces will be those forces which are pulling it backwards. With that logic, it means that forward forces will be 12 sine 30 minus 8 sine 45 is equals to 2a so when we calculate this this will become 12 
साइन थर्टी माइनस एट साइन फोर्टी फाइव ज़ीरो पॉइंट थ्री फोर थ्री इज इक्वल टू टू ए विच मीन्स द एक्सेलरेशन ऑफ बोथ ए एंड बी इज ज़ीरो पॉइंट वन सेवन टू लेट्स राउंड ऑफ सो now we have the acceleration the final speed as well as the distance traveled so we can now use this formula which is v square minus u square is equals to 2 ax so fi the final speed is unknown minus 0 is equals to 2 times the acceleration times the distance traveled so v square is equals to 2 times 0.172 times 0.4 which is 0.1376 and for the final velocity will become 0.3709 so for part b it says that it is given instead that both faces are rough the coefficient of friction between each particle and the face of the block is mu find the value of mu for which the system is in limiting equilibrium so when a system is in limiting equilibrium it means that it is about it is on the verge of movement so that would mean that b is at the point of moving downwards and a is at the point of moving upwards so since we have friction we need to find out first we will find out friction in terms of mu so friction is always the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal reaction which we have written as r so the friction on particle a will be mu multiplied by the normal reaction is in this direction perpendicular to the plane so it will be 8 cos 45 and for particle b it will be 12 cos 30 since the normal reaction will act in this way so for friction on a will be mu times 8 cos 45 and the friction on b is equals to mu multiplied by 12 cos 30 so when the system is in limiting equilibrium it is not moving so the acceleration is zero so this will mean forward force minus resistive force will equal to zero since mass multiplied by the acceleration will become zero so when we look at the system meaning we're looking both of particles a and b as one object the forward force will be the forces that are moving it downward so as in the previous part it will be 12 sin 30 minus 8 sin 45 now since they both faces are rough means that there is friction so in order for b to move downwards it will need to overcome the friction on both particles a and b so the resistive forces will also include friction on a and friction on b this will equal to 0 so first let's calculate this this is 12 sin 30 minus 8 sin 45 which is 0.343 so if we take this to the other side is equals to friction on a plus friction on b so 0.343 is equals to since they both have similar terms we can add this this will be 8 cos 45 plus 12 cos 30 this is 16.049 mu so mu will become 0.343 divided by 16 divided by the previous this part which is 0.0213 so round it off to 0.0214 this is the coefficient of friction so we can write this as hence coefficient of friction is equals to 0.0214